Hello and welcome to the Cracking the Industry Price Code webinar, where we're going to go over the basics of the industry price code system. In the promotional products industry, distributors buy products that are decorated with a company name, logo, or slogan from suppliers. Those products are resold to end users. The prices listed in the supplier catalogs and in ESP are called catalog prices. It's what end buyers pay to the distributors for their branded products. Consider them to be an MSRP, or Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. A price code is included. That code signifies what the distributor's profit is and what the net cost is, or the price the distributor pays the supplier for the product. The price code protects the distributor's interest as it masks what the distributor is paying the supplier for the product. Some distributors believe that if the end buyer knew the net cost, they'd want to buy the product at a lower catalog price. Price codes begin with either an A or a P. Both the A and P code represent a 50-50 split, meaning half of the catalog price is the net cost of the product and half is the distributor's profit. As the price code goes up the alphabet, the percentage split or the distributor profit decreases by 5%. This chart breaks out the price code. Here we've used a catalog price of $10. When the code starts with an A or a P, the split is 50-50, or a $5 net cost and a $5 distributor profit. As we go up the alphabet, the distributor loses 5%. So with a price code of a B or Q, the net cost is $5.50 and the distributor profit is $4.50. The codes go all the way up to a J or Y, which is a 95-5 split. Distributors often prefer not to sell products on a code lower than a C or R, which is a 60-40 split. Prices coded on a C or R ensures the distributor will make money. As the price codes go lower, it becomes harder for distributors to make money as the margins get thinner. When end buyers buy higher quantities, the catalog price and net cost are lower. Note the difference between a quantity of 25 tote bags versus a quantity of 300. In other words, the more an end buyer buys, the less they pay per item. At higher quantities, sometimes the price code will reflect a smaller profit per piece. In this example, 1527 versus 880. If the price code changes within the columns, the code may look as such. This identifies the first column is coded on a P, the next column is coded on a Q, and the last two columns are coded on an R. Suppliers set the catalog price and the net cost. However, the distributor is at liberty to raise or lower the catalog price. When they do this, the price code becomes invalid. Since the net price hasn't changed, the distributor who raises the price of the product will make more money, and the distributor who lowers the cost will make less. Let's take a look. In this example, the distributor is selling at the catalog price. The end buyer wants 25 tote bags and will pay $30.54 per bag for a total price of $763.50. The price code indicates the first column is coded on a P, which means a 50-50 split. Therefore, the net cost, or what the distributor pays the supplier, is $381.75. The distributor's profit is what the end buyer pays minus the net cost. In this case, it is also $381.75. In this example, the distributor has decided to raise the price for the end buyer. The end buyer will pay $32 per bag. Therefore, the total cost to the end buyer is $800. The price code is invalid at this point 
since the net cost of the bag or what the distributor pays the supplier is still $381.75. But this raises the distributor's profit to $418.25. In this example, the distributor has decided to lower the cost for the end buyer. The end buyer will only pay $25 per bag for a total of $625. Once again, the price code is invalid. The net cost or what the distributor pays the supplier for the bags is still $381.75, but the distributor profit will only be $243.25. Suppliers can also offer distributors end quantity pricing, also known as EQP. In this scenario, no matter the quantity order, the distributor gets the pricing of the last column. Suppliers often extend EQP to distributors that buy a lot of product from them, and sometimes to distributors who simply ask for it. It's up to the distributor to decide on whether or not to pass the EQP to their end buyers. While it's great to give clients the lowest price, it cuts into the distributor's profit as the net cost per piece. 25 bags sold at the first column's price yields a $381.75 profit, but 25 bags sold at EQP yields only a $220 profit or the distributor can sell the 25 bags at the first column price and pocket the difference between the EQP net costs, thus making more money. 25 bags sold at the first column price without passing the EQP net cost to the end buyer yields a $433.75 profit. A related term is next quantity pricing or NQP. Order 25 to tote bags and get the 50 piece price. Order 50 tote bags and get the 100 piece price and so on. That concludes this webinar on the industry pricing codes. If you have any questions, you can email us at internshipprogram at asicentral.com.